Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today, oh, welcome as well to the Mastering Georgia Ness series, except we have a guest artist today in the Mastering Georgia Ness series, and that's Charles Warren Eaton, who was uh, one of the preeminent tonalists. And, uh, I had a need to do this uh, study. Um, I'm thinking of using it as a demonstration in the book. Actually, if I get a little encouragement, I may do so. Otherwise, I, I may have enough demonstrations in that book. I'm thinking about it. Um, and when we get to the end of the video, I'll tell you why I'm only thinking about it. Yeah. Let's see if I can remember that. Um, I will. I will remember it. So. Uh, by the way, the full-length version of this video at 4K is available in the members area um, where you get to see me in the throes of battle and I'm laying tips and tricks on you along the way. This is our little 15-minute overview and, uh, you know, kind of a taste of, um, you know, some members area stuff. It's all these sky videos I've been putting up, um, you know, that's just... Uh, a bit of a phase of channels going through here where I'm 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 into doing sky paintings and I'm into teaching about it so I've been making those available to everyone uh, I'm basically just trying to boost the channel's profile a bit and uh, those of you that are members I really appreciate your patience and uh, I'm always trying to give you guys a lot of value as well but uh yeah full length 4k no ads that's the members area and it's a great way to support me you know uh, so let's talk about this painting. Uh, we are working on a uh, nice hard bit of hardboard. It's got two layers of transparent gesso on it. And um, I'm currently uh, working with Burnt Umber to do the drawing slash underpainting. And uh, uh, the reason I chose Burnt Umber is I knew I wasn't going to be able to do the color bit of the, um, pardon me, of the painting um, the same the same day as uh, this drawing so uh, when that's the case uh, sometimes I'll make my own custom mic number which if you've been with me any time at all you, you know what that's about um, but burn number works real well too especially if there's a lot of uh, uh, red in the um, in the painting and almost always red works as a good background color for landscape painting anyway so um, burn number is a real winner because burn number was dry to the touch the next day it dries really quick and I believe there's a an element in it called magnanese which I'm probably not pronouncing correctly but um, that is actually an agent that would be added to paints quite frequently to um, speed up the drying time yeah so there's that so why am I interrupting the Georgia Ness flow uh, with a Charles Warren Eaton well I um, I basically consider him one of the top three tonalist painters, um, and the book I'm working on is a book on tonalism, um, and I felt like he needed to be represented, uh, represented it. and I'll tell you at the end of the video again why I may not actually go with this painting. We'll see. I have some, you know, I came, so I did this painting yesterday, and I came in the studio today, and yeah, I'm, I'm more, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where I did. The reason I was really attracted to this is like, Obviously, it's the colors if you saw the thumbnail. I mean, they're so warm and rich and inviting. I don't do a lot of snow scenes, but I have painted this scene uh, before, um, twice actually. Only once, I think, on the channel here, but um, my, my wife really loved it. So I, I think I sold um, the first one I did. And um, after that, I uh, did one just for her, which is in the living room. It kind of tucked away in a bookshelf there. <laughs> Anyway, um, that's uh, I was looking for a uh, uh, Charles Warren Eaton to do, and this is the one that, that presented itself. Um, although today I'm looking around and seeing some others that might work even better, so we'll see. Um, anyway, uh, anyway, again, sorry, sorry about that. You know, I don't write these, uh, I don't write scripts for this, so <clears throat> so you're looking for some tips, you're looking for some tricks, say. Eh? Well, here's one. Um, I chose to use a little bit larger brush here in the sky um, because um, not not my favorite type of sky to paint in that there's no, weren't a lot of real distinct features other than those light patches. 
Um, and in a case like that, I find having a larger brush uh, sort of works better. Um, and you see me just kind of, in some cases, almost just scribbling down paint um, because I have to, there, what I'm really relying on is subtle shifts and variations in color. And in this case, it would have been quite a lot of yellow ochres involved, um, a lot of gray uh, made, uh, Mike's gray made with uh, ivory black and um, titanium white. And um, <clears throat> Burnt Sienna is definitely uh, a player in this uh, painting as well, I'd say. Uh, and then Alizarin Crimson, so a lot of the more purpley aspects. Oh, and Burnt Umber, don't let me forget the good old Burnt Umber. Burnt Umber, a little bit of Alizarin Crimson, you know, that's getting us into those like darker cloud shapes I just painted. They have a purplish feel, but they're not an overt purple. And by the way, in about a few minutes here, I'm going to read you a little bit. I have a book. <clears throat> I know I've read about this before. It's been many years. Uh, Intimate Landscapes, Charles Warren Eaton and the Toneless Movement in American Art. This book is rare, and I paid quite a lot for it. This is written by David A. Cleveland. It's an amazing book, and um, uh, you can tell David is a huge fan of Charles Warren Eaton, and with good reason. Charles Warren Eaton is an amazing painter, and his story is very, very interesting, and his work, of course, is sublime. Yeah, so um, give me a minute or two uh, to finish burbling here, and uh, uh, we'll get into reading you a little bit of that. Um, so, you know, getting the sky uh, going, um, <clears throat> working around those trees, I, I really liked how he had... Um, in the middle distance, the um, or the distance, just straight up distance. I mean, the sky is more distant, but uh, these kind of gray hills. I thought that really worked well, and um, also you can see the big payoff. Now I painted uh, a lot of the uh, sky before I went to lunch yesterday, and when I came back after lunch, I started painting in these these brighter areas, which absolutely make the sky. Everything just really starts coming together. And uh, I ended up being pretty happy with that. Um, you know, um, uh, even though I find these kind of vaguer sorts of skies a challenge, um, you know, I, I know I'm up for it. I'm up for it. And uh, we basically just keep uh, modulating color and moving around. And that's the key to doing that sort of sky. Um, and at the end of the day, you go, well, there's quite a lot of features in that sky. And, and there are. It's just you know a challenging sky i guess is how i put it um the other challenge of course would be uh, the trees and things we'll talk about that in a minute um the snow was really interesting i don't uh i come from california um bay area you know uh i i saw a real snow one year there i think it was 77 or something like that so i'm not a big time painter of snow i've been in the snow um, but pretty rarely it's a rare experience for me and not for my wife though And that's one of the reasons why she really liked this scene because it reminded her of um, England now I'm quite sure it's not a painting of England, but you know, it's that kind of scene um, The snow was fun to paint a lot of yellow in the snow uh, working off of the gray and uh, again using a lot of uh, raw umber burn umber um, in a sense, the palette for this was quite limited. I didn't get into any real um, greens. Um, everything was uh, some sort of umber or sepia or yellow or black or white. So quite a limited palette. And I'm pretty happy uh, in general with the overall effect I got. Now, I painted mine as a 9x12. I don't know what size his was. Yeah. Anyway, let's jump in this book. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to start at the beginning here. Uh, page 5. Charles Warren Eaton was one of the most important yet least known landscape painters to explore the toneless aesthetic which infused American art during the years circa 1880 to 1920. Highly regarded in his day, a ubiquitous name in major exhibitions for over 40 years, Eaton produced a prodigious number of characteristically low-toned atmospheric views from which tonalism took its name. Intimate scenes, often at dawn or dusk, liming the ephemeral and poetic moods of nature. Now, David A. Cleveland, if you, uh, I, this book, you, you can't get it, but there's a, a lot of this was folded into his chapter on Charles Warren Eaton in his book, A History of American Tonalism, which you should go buy. Um, it's in its third edition, and uh, it's affordable. It's an amazing book. 
it's a, a lifetime achievement, I, I'm sure, for David. And I absolutely love that book, and I've been recommending it for years. And there, actually, you look around on my channel, if you just type in um, American Tonalism, you'll see I did a, um, a page by page, not every single page, because it's a big book, but you get a good sense of what the book looks like and why you should get it. But what you don't get a sense of in that uh, overview is how poetically and beautifully that David writes. He really does. You got a little taste of it there. So, da, 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 member of the Lotus da, 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 Clubs, da, 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 da. Seedbeds of American Tonalism at the turn of the 19th century. Eaton studied with the important tonalist figure painter and champion of the aesthetic movement. Thomas Wilmer Dewing. Ah, Thomas Dewing. Know him? Know him? Know his stuff? And da, 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 as recently as 20 years ago, I'm, I'm jumping around. Eaton, like many of his contemporaries who had eschewed Impressionism's bright chromaticism or subjects with social and narrative content in favor of a quietist landscape art, was relatively unknown to the American art world outside a small circle of connoisseurs and dealers. Eaton's life, like the toneless style of which he was a master, was clouded in obscurity and misapprehension. Mm, that could be me. That could be me down the road. If I'm so lucky to have someone studying my work, that would be great. Anyway, back into the book. Often derided and dismissed as uh, retardinaire or backward looking. Uh, working in a derivative French Barbizon style, only recently have new scholarship, numerous retrospectives on individual artists and the reemergence of a critical mass of tonalist works in the marketplace allowed a reassessment of tonalism. So David wrote this book before his uh, magnum opus, um, A History of American Tonalism. It's kind of a, a bit of a dry run, and you get a sense of that here. Uh, yet despite, next page, despite renewed attention, the once famous Eaton remains elusive, a man tantalizing beyond our grasp, with the exception of a trove of letters written to his friend and fellow artist, Leonard Ackman, in the 1880s, along with a few magazine articles from his late career, and the personal reminiscences of, of this lady who knew him during his final years, there is almost no journals, diaries, or reminiscences of friends, family, or other artists that might provide a deeper insight into Eaton's life and artistic aspirations. It's possible to trace his whereabouts, his studios, his numerous trips to Europe, and countless exhibition successes, but the later life of the artist remains something of a mystery. I'm going to leave it there now because we're running out of time, but you can get this book. It's out there. It's not cheap, but it's a it's an awesome book. It's a collectible book, and uh, Intimate Landscapes, Charles Warren Eaton, and the Toneless Movement in American Art, 1880 to 1920, and that is by David A. Cleveland. Thank you for that, David. Um, we're getting close to the end of the video, and I'm painting. So this is where I had an issue. Like when I got to paint trees without leaves. I would prefer normally to let the painting dry so that I have a lot more control. My strategy here, um, and I pass it on to you, like I give you all the information that I, uh, I have basically um, just free of charge. Uh, you need extra oil in your paint so that you can glide over the top. Also, I had another little strategy that I employed, which was to use um, quite a lot of lead white while painting this painting, uh, which I knew would be a quick dryer, and I threw a lot of umber in. So the dry, the sky was pretty much kind of dry, dryish. Um, by the time I got to the end of the day and was dealing with those trees. So, um, and I was, you know, uh, a bit frustrated with them. Um, but I'm looking at them now. I think they look okay, you know. Um, whether they look good enough for the book or not, I'm still debating. I may pick another uh, Charles Warren Eaton because this book is kind of designed to be a, one of my treaties for the ages, you know. And um, I don't want anything in there that I'm just not, you know, super, super thrilled with. But I am pretty happy with it right now. We'll see. It's debatable. Um, I was trying to find out some more research about this uh, about this painting. All I know is it was painted in 1887. Oh, you see me turning it right now just so 
uh, I can get a little better photograph with less glare. Yeah. Um, I'm quite pre pleased with the painting, I have to say. Um, if I had give, given it the time to wait to dry to do those trees, would it have been better? It's, it's really hard to say, honestly. Um, trees without leaves, they're not one of my favorite things to paint, so I usually don't do it. But, uh, you know, I, I, there were so many other great aspects to this painting. I see I did a little more work on them, was a little happier threw a few other things in there and I'm pretty happy uh, we're gonna see we're gonna see anyway thank you so much for joining me today I really appreciate you taking the time to come by and if you got all the way into this video please leave me a comment um, or uh, leave me one of those nice fat tips that would be great I'll go get a cup of coffee or give me some sushi with that that would be awesome um, or hey if you're doing okay um, this painting will be for sale on my site as are most of the paintings I'd put on this channel, I have them there. Um, eventually I will take them down as they go into galleries or get sold, but if you see something that catches your eye on my channel, that's absolutely the best way to support me. And I hope, by the way, that George understands that um, we, uh, we, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to change the name of this series to Mastering Tonalism series. Who knows though, I might end up doing that. Can't say. But either way, until I come back with another video for your edification, enjoyment, and education, do me a favor, do me a solid, take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Just, just relax. The world's a little bit in some upheaval right now, but, um, you know, we'll get through it. And uh, take good care, stay out of trouble, and God bless you and your family.